What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. We got some major news here and some major results here, um, some that you might not even know about, including five different states uh, that came out with some kind of shocking results here. Uh, that we'll be going over here in this video, and uh, I'll show you here, right here on the screen, so you guys can see it here. Um, if you're new to our channel, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Uh, we are giving away money here pretty much almost every single day up until Thanksgiving. Uh, we're giving away money for people's Thanksgiving dinners, um, well over a thousand dollars here. So if you've been watching my channel here, uh, we we did this for thanks or for uh, Halloween. We're doing this for Thanksgiving. We're doing this for the Christmas holidays. Just kind of part of our way of giving back. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, we're doing trivia questions every single day. If you can answer them correctly, um, you just could win money from me. Yeah. So stay tuned. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just click the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos. Remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below. Yeah, so let's jump right in. We got some crazy stuff to discuss here. Okay, first up, House and Senate. Still too close to call. The House looking like it's going to go Republican, though. Uh, they need 218 seats for uh, Republican majority. There are 211. It depends on the source you're looking at. Uh, this is from Yahoo. It depends on where you're looking at. Uh, if you look at Google here, uh, 209, 209 really depends on um, the place you're looking at, um, whether they've determined it to be a called election yet or not. So a little bit, uh, you know, slightly different results based on the the place here. Um, but the House is probably going to go to Republican, although not definite yet. Um, the results are in. Some states may go to runoff elections. Um, we're probably going to see that in the Senate on the Georgia uh, election race uh, between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker almost positively at this point. Uh, that could determine whether the Senate becomes Republican or Democrat. Uh, so that will be very, very interesting as well. You can see here right now, uh, the Senate's 48 to 48. 48 to 48. Yeah, so the Republicans gained 16 seats in the the House of Representatives, 16. So quite a few there, um, where the Democrats gained four seats in the House. So the Republicans were definitely the winners in the House of Representatives. They're probably going to win the majority in the House. Um, in the Senate, the Republicans lost one seat. The Democrats gained one seat. So I mean, we're, we're going to have to see here, because remember, the Republicans had more seats up for re-election. Um, they had, uh, the Democrats had 36 people not up for re-election, and the Republicans had 29 not up for re-election. Remember that senators served six-year terms, six-year terms. So, like, for example, uh, one of the controversial ones this year was Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin. The guy who twice blocked stimulus checks and also uh, wants to potentially have Social Security be on the block every single year to be approved by Congress. He got reelected by the slimmest of margins. He got reelected. So the people from Wisconsin said, yeah, we want him back in for six more years. Where uh, people like Democrats, uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, they're up for re-election in two more years. So they remember the state senators serve six-year terms, but there's midterm elections or regular elections every two years. So senators don't come up for re-election every every time. They they kind of rotate. About a third of senators come up for re-election every time. So this particular election, there was more 
Republicans up for re-election. Also remember, the Democrats only need to win 50 seats to win control of the Senate because in a 50-50 tie, the tiebreaker always goes to the vice president of the United States. And the vice president right now is a Democrat, Kamala Harris. So uh, vice president Kamala Harris. So if it comes out to a 50-50 tie, which it currently is in the current Congress, the Democrats will win control of the Senate yet again. So keep that in mind. Also, another really big thing that was on the vote here for uh, five different states, Republican, typically Republican states and Democrat states, five states put it on the ballot to let the people decide, to let the people decide. And all five states sided with making abortion legal. Yeah, even in typically a couple typically Republican states, here's what happened. This is kind of, for some people, this is going to be uh, shocking. And this is what happened in a previous Republican state that already voted on this, actually, as well. Uh, so this is people are showing what they want here uh, as they went out to vote here. This is not lawmakers doing the what they think it, the people want. The people actually went out and voted themselves. Here's what happened. So uh, voters in California, Vermont, and Michigan, Michigan's kind of a swing state, sometimes Republican, sometimes Democrat. Like, for example, last uh, year, they had a Democrat governor, but a Republican legislature. Uh, California, typically Democrat. On Tuesday, approved ballot measures enshrining abor abortion rights in their state constitution. While those in typically traditional red Republican states of Montana and Kentucky also rejected measures that would have restricted access to reproductive care and thus thereby limiting uh, abortion restrictions. The votes signal support for abortion rights after the Supreme Court in June overturned the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade and constitutional rights to the procedure. In August, Kansas, another typically Republican state, voters also rejected a ballot measure that would have given the state legislature the authority to restrict abortion access through a state constitutional amendment. The, valid, the ballot votes came amid high-profile Senate and House races, with some candidates running for office across the nation with hardline views on abortion access. Already in a post-Roe America, about half of all states have moved to restrict abortion access, even as polls show that most Americans approve of the right to abortion. And as we're seeing here, when it actually goes to the ballots, people are voting to uphold it. This is what the votes are showing. Uh, Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham, have proposed a 15-week national abortion ban, though other members of the party have supported leaving the issue up to the states. And we kind of know what happens there. Republican states are kind of banning it. Democrat states are kind of not, typically. I mean, you know, each state kind of varies. Uh, Democrats, by contrast, have made protecting abortion rights a key plank, plank of their midterm election. Uh, Planned Parenthood on Tuesday tweeted the message is clear from voters. The majority, this is a quote from them, the majority of voters don't want politicians deciding personal medical decisions for them. The Reproductive Health Care Rights Group said. Wow. So let me know your thoughts here on this. Uh, Vermont came the first state to explicitly enshrine abortion rights into its state constitution after voters approved the ballot measure, according to unofficial results from the Secretary of State's office. In Michigan, Republicans had hoped to enact a 1930 law that would ban abortion in all cases except to save the life of a mother, which morphed into a legal challenge that worked its way up to the state's high court, uh, the Supreme Court. On election day, however, Michigan voters were confronted with a ballot measure that would enshrine abortion rights into the state's constitution, which would make the 1931 law and court fight moot. 
Voting results show that 53% of Michiganders supported the law compared to 46% who voted to reject it, according to the New York Times trackers, in another victory for abortion rights. In California, 68% of voters approved a similar ballot measure enshrining abortion rights, while roughly 31% objected it. Kentucky voters faced a ballot measure that would declare there is no right to an abortion in the state constitution, similar to the Kansas measure that was rejected earlier this year. According to the New York Times tracker, 52% of Kentucky voters rejected the move, while 47% supported it. Montana voters rejected a ballot measure to approve the Born Alive Infants Protection Act. The law declares any fetus or embryo that survives an abortion is a legal person and criminalizes doctors who do not try to save the life of a, quote, born alive infant. About 53% of Montana voters rejected the ballot measures, while 46% sub- supported it. So let me know your thoughts here. Um, of course, everybody has a slightly different opinion on this, but this is what voters are saying. Uh, in Republican and Democrat states here, um, yeah, so surprising, surprising. Do you think it will be on the ballot more, more? Do you think it should be on the ballot more? Or do you think lawmakers, politicians should be able to decide it for people instead? So that's where it kind of gets a little sticky, right? So should the people be able to decide it and vote for it? Or should politicians be able to decide it for you instead? Uh, in an, in another interesting case here, because we we kind of... Another thing we can kind of think about this here um, is with vaccines, you know, um, it's kind of similar here with, uh, you know, you know, some people being forced to take vaccines in the in the past or losing their jobs or something. There was a case that actually got, well, I'll show it to you here. The New York Supreme Court uh, had a recent ruling here, uh, like about two weeks ago or so. That uh, government employees for the state that were fired who did not comply with state vaccine mandates, the New York Supreme Court ruled it was unconstitutional that the government could not force them to do this or lose them job their job. And I'll show you the details here. The judge found that New York City commissioner was the order of requiring vaccination of city workers violated New York Constitution's separation of powers doctrine, was arbitrary and capricious, and violated the fired workers' equal protection and due process rights. The judge ruled that they should get back pay and be rehired. Yeah, and this was... They were, this happened a year ago. So that's like a, a significant amount of back pay. So, just to kind of give you an idea here of things that are going on here in our country, that people don't really like it when the government forces them when it comes to things with medical procedures and what to do with their bodies and. I get it. It's a tough situation when it comes to, you know, like abortion and babies' rights and pro life and pro choice. That's a tough, it's a tough one because, you know, I could argue either side of the coin. You could put me on a debate team and I, I could literally argue either point. Um, but it seems like the majority of people are saying that it should be up to a woman and her doctor, uh, especially because right now, when you, when you try to put a blanket theory on it, um, there's just too many circumstances where like the mother's in danger and, and it's just, there's just too many different things that are like, it's, it's, it's just too difficult to put a blanket statement and say, well, this is, this is it. And it's too difficult. So when it actually, if, if, if people are actually given the right to vote on it so far, every single vote uh, has turned up that people think it should be legal. If the politicians are left to say, here's what you have to do with your body, 
well, then it's a, it's a different story. You can let me know your thoughts on this. Um, what do you think should happen? Should the politicians should be able to decide for you? Or should people have the right to determine uh, what to do between them and their doctor? I don't know what's going to happen for each state here, but I'll keep you up to date. And remember, this was the second largest issue uh, going into the midterm elections behind the economy. So for a lot of people, this was a really, really huge issue and really still will be going forward. There's really still some um, elections that are going to be going on for quite a while. Uh, one of the very, very close one is uh, with Republican Lauren Boebert, the incumbent in Colorado. Uh, she's a little bit controversial. Um, this race is very close. There's a couple hundred votes determining this race. Yeah, she was actually losing this race. Now she's winning it by a few hundred votes it's probably going to be close enough that they're going to have to do a revote and and because the vote is so close they're going to do a procedure of what's called a where they're going to go back through some votes that were illegible some mail-in votes that came in and weren't signed and they go back and they try to contact these people and uh, they, I think they give them like seven or eight days to, on um, you know, no matter who the vote's for, and they try to contact those people and say, hey, your vote, we got it, but it's not quite enough for us to count it. Um, and they try to go back and contact those people because the votes are so close. At one point, there was less than 100 votes determining the winner. Yeah, that close. Also, another very close race here in the Senate, which could determine the entire fate of the Senate, whether it's Republican or Democrat, is uh, between Pastor Raphael Warnock, the current incumbent for the Democrats, and Herschel Walker, the former NFL star. Uh, there's some controversy on his side, his side, too. He's supposedly not for abortion, but there's all this controversy where he has this baby with with a former ex girlfriend and um he maybe apparently paid for an abortion with her if you followed that story you know i, I don't know you know i'm not going to get into all that but um that's literally within less than a percent here of that so they're going to probably do an, a runoff race on that one which basically means they're going to go and vote on it again yeah, so Raphael Warnock's winning that vote, but he, did, he didn't get to the 50% threshold. So each state has slightly different laws. And uh, in Georgia, if you don't have 50%, even though you won the election, even if you didn't, if you didn't get to 50%, then you have to go to a runoff race. You have to go basically do, do the election again. And actually, you can see here in Georgia, if this independent guy, Chase Oliver, who got 81,000 votes, 2% of the vote actually, uh, if he wasn't there, then we would have had a winner declared. So Raphael Warnock's ahead by about 50,000 votes. So what they'll do is they'll vote again, and that guy won't be on the ballot. So that'll kind of determine who the winner will be. Um, so the 81,000 people that voted for Chase Oliver won't be able to vote for them, and that'll that'll probably determine the winner and maybe i guess maybe some people could change their vote probably not but the 81,000 people who voted for the the other probably the independent uh will have to vote for the democrat or the republican but the other thing that could happen here is some people might not show up again to vote or more people could show up to vote so you got to remember those those very slim margins kind of determine. Uh, remember last time around, uh, there was two Georgia Senate runoff races, both Senate seats from Georgia. And the reason Georgia's up again is because um, the, the the last Georgia Senate seat, um, I can't remember what it was. The, I think the guy passed away. And um, so there was like a, there was like a, it was an end term. So they were like filling in a seat there. And uh, that's why it's up again already. So yeah. And last time, both Georgia Senate's runoff seats went up for re-election that quickly. Yeah, so Georgia's like a right down the middle of the road state, like half Republicans, half Democrats, literally to the T. 
And um, I guess it's just one of those things. Like people are just voting Republican or Democrat. I don't know. Maybe, maybe people are, you know, choosing who they think is better. And maybe the economy and these other things have, you know, a lot to do with it. You got you to gotta remember, um, we've seen a lot of women show up to vote. We've seen a lot of people say that they're voting because of how bad the economy is. A lot of people saying they're voting for specific reasons as well. And this is kind of shaping up how our economy is going to be. This is part of the reason why so many states are sending out inflation relief checks. Um, I mean, this literally shapes our country. Yeah, so the, the what we're seeing here is the most important stuff based on what voters say. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments, and I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet. It's completely free to do so. Click the bell icon after you subscribe, and uh, thank you so much for liking this video. You can click this video here next to see multiple stimulus checks, brand new details I have here. Um, definitely wanna watch this video next if you haven't yet. So click on this video here next. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.